Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is another empties video. I have not done one of these for three or four months now, so I have accumulated quite a few products. This might be a bit of a longer video. And I'm going to start like I always do by taking everything out and sorting it into categories so you have an idea of what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's just get started with that. One thing I want to do differently today and something I would like to incorporate into future empties videos as well is to make sure I'm giving you numbers. So I'm going to share uh, the value of all of the makeup products that I used up. I'm also going to give you like how many uses it took to finish if I have that information. I can also do that with some of my skincare products as well. Those are numbers I already track and have so I might as well share them to make these videos even more informative and maybe more fun to watch. I always start with makeup so the first makeup product that I used up since my last empties video was this Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick in the shade Crush. I used it as a liquid lipstick for a long time and then in its final years of its life, I used it as a cream blush. Doesn't this feel like a million years ago? I don't even remember when exactly I used this up. Let me check. I think I used this up like right at the beginning of March or right at the end of February. So it's been a long time since my last update. This retails for $20. You can see that there is a lot of windowing. I really tried to get as much out of there as I could. Like a lot of people, I'm not really going out of my way to purchase liquid lipsticks anymore. I am wearing a liquid lipstick today. I have a lip liner and then I put a little bit of Stila Perla on top a throwback, one of my old favorites from years ago. And then I put a little bit of a lip balm on top to make it more comfortable. And I do have enough liquid lipsticks in my collection that if I really, really felt like wearing one, I could, but this isn't something I would buy again, mostly because this isn't really a formula I go for anymore. The next product is a mini setting spray from Ulta Beauty. It's the Wannabe Matte want to be free matte setting spray and it says it controls shine. I don't feel like it really does the best at controlling shine. <laughs> um, it wasn't the worst one I've ever tried but I just don't really feel like this is as good as the uh, all nighter from Urban Decay so it's not something I would buy the full size of. The scent was also kind of odd. It kind of smelled soapy so that's not really my favorite. This retails for six dollars the mini and it took me 21 uses to finish this mini size. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know that I am not shy. When I apply setting spray, I use plenty of sprays enough to feel like my full face has been coated. And so 21 uses to finish one ounce seems on par with how long it would take to use up a full size. Usually those are four ounces and they take me anywhere from 60 to 80 uses to finish. So 21 for a one ounce bottle seems uh, pretty good. The next one is a color corrector. I'm pretty sad about this, but I have talked about it a ton in my Partners in Cream updates. I was trying to finish this before it expired. This was a favorite of mine. I was in the shade Fair. They don't make this product anymore. If they bring it back, I would be super excited. I would definitely purchase another one. It was just a really nice lightweight but higher coverage under eye corrector and I really liked it. And I'm using the one from Flower, it's okay, but I am on the hunt for another one. I think I might try the Sigma one next. I think that they have a duo that would be something I would be interested in trying, but I don't really know about a ton of the ones out there on the market. I don't know if color correctors are really a big thing that's happening right now, so there probably aren't that many options, but if you have a recommendation, please let me know. This retailed for $6. I do not have the number of uses it took to finish. I'm sorry, I just did not track that. The next one is a brow pencil from ColourPop. This was in the shade Auburn and I used it. I purchased it originally when I had more red in my hair, but if I used a light hand, I could use it in my brows even when I didn't have a ton of red in my hair. I do have a warmer blonde hair color, so using a warmer eyebrow pencil doesn't always look super weird, even though I feel like my brows are much more cool toned naturally versus my hair color. It was definitely more brown than red. If you have true red hair and you need something to have like a super strong red undertone, this shade is not for you. I also didn't like that the packaging broke pretty early on. This is the spoolie side and whenever I would try to take off the cap, the entire spoolie would come off with it. Definitely not the best design um, and I did have to be more careful with it towards the end of its life, but it was a good formula. I do really like these micro brow sticks and um, I don't think I would repurchase it though. I've, I've tried some other formulas. I always really like the NYX Microbrow 
So if I do want to purchase another one, I'd probably try that instead of getting another one of these. And full price, this is $7. This next product is the most expensive makeup product that I've used up recently. It's the It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Fair. I did open the packaging to make sure I could get everything out of it. This is an old favorite. I think this is the second, maybe third one of these that I've used up over the years. I do have another one it's the one in the pink packaging. I think it's like the illumination version and I am glad to have it. I do like having an SPF 50 fuller coverage uh, base product. I, I think that's just a good thing for me to have. Obviously, I don't use it as a replacement for my SPF. I do wear regular sunscreen underneath, but it is nice to have just that added protection. I don't know if people really talk about this anymore, but I still really like it. I like the formula, I like the level of coverage, and I like the undertone of this. Fair is like a pretty great match for me. This retails for $42. I remember it being like $38 not that long ago, so they must have raised the price recently, but this is good. I'm glad to have another version of it in my collection. The next one is a lip gloss, and this was part of a duo that cost $14, so I'm going to say that the retail value for this is $7, and this is a Marc Jacobs lip gloss in the shade Pink Parade. This had a pink color, but it also had a blue shift to it. There was some type of glitter in it that also made it blue, which was interesting. Not something I wore outside of the house too often, just because that's a very specific look and not one that I'm going for all the time. But I really like the formula of this. It had a slightly minty feeling, but it was very thick and rich and it felt very moisturizing. I have another one of this in the shade Sugar Sugar. Like I said, it was part of a duo, and I will use that one up happily. I don't think Marc Jacobs does makeup anymore, so I can't recommend purchasing it, but if I were to finish that one up and it was still available, I would likely purchase a full size of something that's a little bit closer to my lip color and that doesn't have any glitter in it. I did take the stopper out and I got another week's worth of uses out of this. In total, I got 72 uses out of this, which is pretty great for a mini lip product. And the last one is an old favorite. I don't need to talk about it anymore, but it's the hashtag this is everything lip loving bomb. And I remember talking about this in a how long does it take to use that makeup video forever ago. And I'm pretty sure in that video I said that this comes out to being like one or two cents per use. You get a ton of product in here. You get 0.42 grams, so half of a gram. And I just really enjoy the packaging. It's a metal tin. I can reuse these for other things. This retails for $5. I have, I typically repurchase like several in one order, usually like once or twice a year but I have some other tinted lip balms and some other lip gloss products that I can use as like reapplying moisturizing lip products. So I think I'm gonna try to work through some of those. I do still have a handful of these floating around like in my backpack and on my nightstand and stuff. And so I'll continue using those and enjoying them, but instead of always reaching for this, I'm gonna try to reach for those other products too, just so that they don't get neglected. So when you total up all of the makeup I've used up since my last empties, I have finished $93 worth of makeup, which definitely isn't as much as normal, especially when I am trying to actively pan products or actively finish them. I'm not really taking as aggressive an approach this year. I'm more concerned about spreading the love and using all of my products more equally instead of just focusing on one product at a time. So I don't imagine I'm going to finish as much makeup this year as maybe I have in previous years, but maybe next year. I feel like next year is going to be a more aggressive year where I actively try to finish things. I really want to get the two body products out of the way really quickly. One I've talked about several times. It's the Everyman Jack Body Wash and Shower Gel in Cedarwood. This is one of my favorites. We usually buy the bigger sizes of it and then refill this smaller size for the shower. My husband likes it too. It's just a really simple um, but very good smelling body wash. So this is an old favorite. And the other one is one that I wanted to make sure I used up before it expired because I don't really go through this type of product very often. And it's the Pacifica Coconut Cream Body Souffle. This smells amazing. I love the way the coconut products from Pacifica smell. And I don't think that they make this anymore, but they do have another coconut body cream product that I'm really hoping is the same. And I do have a couple body creams to go through before I purchase that. Mainly, I just don't ever think to reach for body creams. I just never make the time to add that to like my routine, but I really should. I definitely will try to reach for products like that more 
And I mean, this took me years to finish, just this, this small jug right here. So it's definitely gonna take a while before I can go and purchase the other one. I'm gonna go a little out of order again, and I'm gonna start with hair products, and then I'll go back to skincare products. I have a couple things from Pacifica. The first one is a Rosemary Purify Invigorating Shampoo. And this was a very clarifying shampoo that had a very strong minty scent. If you like that type of product, then this is fantastic. If you want a clarifying shampoo that's gonna feel very like tingly on your scalp, this is it. I used to really love clarifying shampoos, but I haven't found myself wanting to reach for that type of product for a long time. So I'm glad to have used it up, but I wouldn't purchase it again just because that formula isn't something that's right for me anymore. It has rosemary in it, which I know is good for like hair growth and stuff. The mint part I don't actually think does anything good for your hair or for your scalp. Um, but it says it's for a congested scalp and it's formulated without sulfates. It's 100% vegan and cruelty free and I enjoyed it. I have some other Pacifica hair products that um, I'll talk about in a second, but that I am still currently using and for the most part I like the Pacifica hair line. I have two conditioners here. I talk about these all the time. I had a bunch of these. I bought a ton of them when they were on super sale during the holidays a couple years ago and I'm finally working my way through them. This is the Banana Love Deep Intensive Moisture Mask and these smell divine. They smell like banana cream pie or some type of banana dessert and I just use them as a regular conditioner. I don't use them as a separate mask and these are just so nice. They make my hair feel so good. They make my hair smell so good and they're just so good. I have a lot of conditioners to go through, so I'm not repurchasing these right away, but I thoroughly enjoyed using them. These are probably like my fifth and sixth bottle that I've gone through so far. And yeah, just really great. I definitely recommend this. Oh, but if you have like super parched hair and you need something really, really thick, I don't think that this is it. This is kind of like a middle of the road type of hair mask, which is great for me because my hair gets weighed down easily, but I don't recommend this for people who maybe have like really curly hair or hair that just requires a lot more moisture because this is not like the most moisturizing mask out there. I have an overtone color depositing conditioner. This is the Pastel Silver, and I have a ton of these in different colors and different levels of pigmentation, and I mix them together to get whatever color I'm looking for. I've used them to go like rose gold. I've used them to go ginger. I do have a video where I used a combination of these to create like a rosewood color and that was really beautiful too. Every time I play around and try different undertones and different colors with these conditioners, I always really like how it turns out. And if I do mess up or if I do go with something that I don't think actually works for me, it'll wash out in a few washes, which is great. Last hair product is a hair powder, the All Powerful Easy Blending Power Cleansing Style Extending, totally to die for tinted dry shampoo powder for platinum to light hair shades. And it's from Cake Beauty. They don't have it in this packaging anymore. Um, and so I don't know exactly if I would repurchase it. I do have another one of these in my collection, which is awesome. And I do have a couple hair powders that I bought forever ago from Pacifica that I, again, don't think that they make anymore. So I do have quite a few hair powders to go through before I worry about getting more of this on my hands. The one that I saw on the Cake website or on Ulta, Ulta's website because they carry this line. The product was a lot smaller and I don't know if it's exactly the same. It might be a different type of powder, so I, I don't know. Hopefully I can get my hands on this again. Hopefully they haven't stopped selling this and I can purchase more of these down the line. And I definitely prefer hair powder over aerosol spray dry shampoos. Having lighter hair, I can get away with using dry shampoo powders. If you have really dark hair, I don't really know if there are a lot of products out there for you. They do have a brunette version of this though, but I don't know how dark it goes. Now on to skincare. I did want to talk about a sponge really quickly. This is the Real Technique sponge. I got um, a lot more use out of this than I typically do. This lasted me like, I think six months, which normally these get so beat up and gross that um, I'm not able to use them past a couple of months. So I was really glad to see that. I have a beauty blender that I just used for the first time. It's nice and bright pink and clean. And I just used it for the first time today and I love it. Um, I, I don't know, I feel like the beauty blenders just do last longer for me. The last one I had of this lasted me almost two years of continuous use. So even though it is more expensive, I usually get them on sale for like anywhere from 10 to $15 and then they last me so long that it almost makes it a better deal. Um, I just really like how soft and bouncy these are too. 
Um, not that the Real Techniques one isn't. This is also soft and bouncy, just not as soft or bouncy as the Beauty Blender. I have an SPF in here. It is the Too Faced Hangover Good To Go Skin Protecting SPF 25 Moisturizer. I kind of use this more as a moisturizing primer in conjunction with other SPFs. And I liked this, but this is like $35 full price and it's only SPF 25. So I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't buy it again. This is the second one I've gone through uh, only because the first one I got for free as a gift with purchase, I finished it and then I saw that it was like on clearance a little while later. So I didn't pay full price. I didn't pay anything for the first one. And this one I got a, at a severe discount. But I have other products that I prefer. I'd rather just use a hair coverage SPF and then not have to add this on top. So yeah, I probably won't purchase this one again. I have a cleansing oil from Bosha. This is the Makeup Breakup Cool Cleansing Oil. And I got this from the Costco website. I got a discount on it. And I do think it did a great job at removing my makeup, but I will say it does have a very slight minty feeling and scent. When I use cleansing oils, I do use them around my eyes now. I used to only use them on my face and then I couldn't handle the feeling of having them around my eyeballs, but I've since gotten more used to it and I don't have a problem with it anymore. So I use cleansing oils all over, including around my eyes to remove eye makeup. And I don't really want to use something that has a minty, menthol -y type of smell or taste, or not taste, <laughs> smell or feeling to it. So even though this was good, I wouldn't purchase it again. And I also do have more affordable cleansing oils that I prefer, like the 4-3 Beauty one. Another cleansing balm here, this is from e.l.f. It's the Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm with Hyaluronic Acid, Ceramides, and Peptides. And I do have the number. It took me 29 uses to finish this. And this is two ounces of product. So you don't really get a ton in there. I feel like most cleansing balms are at least three ounces. I did do a video where I compared the cost per use for seven different cleansing oils and balms. So I will have that in the cards if you'd like to know which one you think is the best value for you. I probably wouldn't purchase this again. It was really fun to try out. I do really like it, but I do have more affordable ways to remove my makeup. Even though this is an affordable brand, I was able to find other ones that have even lower costs per use, so I probably wouldn't purchase this one again. Another e.l.f. product is the Holy Hydration Face Cream. This is the fragrance-free version. I love that you can get this product for half off whenever e.l.f. has those 50% off website sales. So you can get this for, I think, $6. It's fragrance-free and it's a very wonderful face cream. It's just a great run-of-the-mill face cream. I'm not gonna run out and repurchase it just yet, because I do have some other face creams that I'd like to work through first, but I do have several of these. I bought a handful during their last sale and my husband is slowly working through them because he also really likes this cream. So yeah, this is a staple. This is an old favorite. Another face cream that I'm kind of annoyed <laughs> that I liked so much is this Charlotte Tilbury Charlotte's Magic Cream Instant Turnaround Moisturizer. And this was a smaller size that came in a mystery box last year. This is one fluid ounce and it took me 69 uses to finish, which I do think is pretty good for um, one ounce of, of face cream, especially because I do use quite a bit of it. I use it all over my face and neck and kind of on my chest too. I really like how this made my face look. I felt fancy when I wore it. I could get past the scent because this does have I mean, it doesn't have a heavy scent, but it's definitely got a little bit more scent than the scentless, fragrance-free face creams that I typically wear, like the one from The Ordinary and the one from e.l.f. that I just talked about. One thing that Charlotte Tilbury does that I really appreciate is they sell refills of products, so you can keep the packaging and then purchase a refill and put it in the original packaging instead of having to purchase a brand new product with new packaging every single time. And they do sell refiller pods of this product, but I'm imagining it's more for the full size product than just for this mini one ounce one. So I'll have to look into it and see if those pods also apply for this. I'm gonna hold on to the packaging because it's really beautiful and I would like to repurpose it for something else if I don't end up purchasing that replacement pod. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't feel like I absolutely need this product. I have a lot of face creams that are more affordable and work really well, but there was something special about the way that this made my face look. It just kind of gave me like an extra little healthy gleam. But in the grand scheme of things, I can't really say that this gives me enough of a different result 
to warrant spending so much more on it than I typically do for skincare. Another product that was a treat to use is this eye cream from Paula's Choice. It's the Clinical Ceramide Enriched Firming Eye Cream. I just talked about this in my Club 100 video. This and the other eye cream that I'm gonna talk about in a second. I was really glad to get over 100 uses out of this. In fact, I got 118 uses out of this. Yeah, this is typically $49 full price. It is on sale currently for $10 off, which is nice. Paula's Choice does have a handful of sales throughout the year, so if I did want to get it again, I would definitely get it on sale. But I was glad to get so much use out of it considering its higher price tag. I do trust Paula's Choice. I don't know much about the science behind skincare ingredients, but I do think that Paula's Choice is a brand that um, does use good products and, and comes from a more informed place instead of just throwing whatever to create a skincare line. I think that the products that are from this brand are well thought out and meant to have long-term benefits. So when it comes to stuff like that, especially with like a retinol product or something that's so close to my eyes, I, I do prefer going for a brand that I trust instead of just trying any retinol eye cream out there. I only used this at night. I did not use it during the day because I worried that using a retinol product during the day and at night might be too much for me and also potentially being out in the sun could be quite damaging. I don't know a ton about skincare, but I do know that you're not supposed to like put on a bunch of retinol and then go like outside. <laughs> you do get half of an ounce and since it took me 118 uses to finish, it did last me about four months, maybe a little bit longer because I don't exactly do a full skincare routine every single night, so I can't say that I use this like seven days a week. I'm gonna go through some of the other eye creams that I have in my collection, and then I will likely go back to this one. And in that Club 100 video, I mentioned that this was my nighttime eye cream, and then my daytime eye night cream was this one from Good Molecules. It's the Yerba Mate Eye Gel. This was a gel. I talked about it in a lot more detail in that video, so I don't wanna go through all of it again and be too repetitive, but I did like this. I think it might be more suited as an eye serum, more so than an eye cream, just for my personal preferences. So if I do buy this again, I will likely buy this and still put another eye cream on top of it. This one took 164 uses to finish, and this is like six or seven dollars, so that's a great value. I did like that I was able to get pretty much everything out of here, given that it's a metal tube, but um, with it being a more liquidy formula, if I accidentally squeezed too hard or used pressure in not the exact right way, I would get way too much product out on my finger. But still, 164 uses is a fantastic value, and I did really enjoy it. The last one is an old favorite. It's the Hylamide Subcumis Multi-Depth Toning Treatment for Water Density. I like to spray my face and then put moisturizer on top, and this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite, hands down, that I've ever tried. I just love it so much. I know Desium and The Ordinary and all those umbrella brands are doing some changes, so I'm not actually sure if this is going to be available anymore. I really hope it is because I do like to stock up in November whenever they have that 23% off sale on everything on their website. So I'm really hoping that this does stick around and if it is, then in November I will definitely stock up and purchase more. This is a long one. I appreciate you sticking with me, adding the numbers and the costs and the uses, added even more time. So I appreciate it if you stuck with me through the entire video. I will continue to do these types of videos every quarter. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick to an exact schedule Lately, I just have not been able to stick to any schedule, so I will try to keep it around the three to four month mark so that there's enough products to talk about to make it more interesting to watch. I do have an empties playlist, so if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, I will have that linked in the cards. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!